It is Anna. Anna. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you ready? Anna, we're recording now, and now really, really is. It's okay. Cool. Anna, 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 Anna Camero. Sorry. Yeah. I just want to ask um, if we're if we're not in the scene, do you want us to mute our um our? No, just no. It's fine. Just to be quiet. Yeah. Okay. You ready? Internal, hot day, a poor hut in the Guatemalan jungle. Anna, 12, is playing with a doll. Suddenly noise from outside filters in, screams, gunshots. Anna hides under the bed. A fighter, Jorge, 17, comes in, but his face is covered. He's unrecognisable. He sees her feet sticking out of the bed, kicks them. Hide yourself. She does. Then he starts shooting at the bed, narrowly missing in each time. Sister, she screams. I'm alive. Hide yourself. I love you, little sister. With that, he leaves, shooting all the while. She hides under the bed, crying. Internal, Anna's house, living room, day, superimposed, Ireland, 20 years later. Anna, 32, is cleaning up toys. If you don't help me, Every single toy I touch will be going into the bin, not the toy box. Is that clear? Two no, no, little no, no, no. boys, Aaron, seven, and Jordan, four, come running in. No, 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 not the Lego. I, I got it, I got it. Jordan, help your brother now. The boys obey. She stands up, looking down at them proudly. I will be making dinner. If I hear even a hint of a fight, I shall bang both of your heads together and give you a kiss. She tousles their hair and walks out. Internal, Anna's house, living room, night. Anna is sitting down in front of her laptop, typing, working. External, school, day. Anna brings her boys into school. External, coffee shop, day. Anna and the boys are eating ice cream, laughing together. External, parking lot, day. Anna is hugging Aaron and Jordan. Please behave for your dad this weekend. I don't want to hear any more drama. The boys run off towards a car parked by. Anna gets back into her own car, drives off. Internal, cafe, day. Anna is working, typing away yet again. Internal, office, day. Anna comes into a fancy looking production office, waves at her colleagues. Internal, Oscar's office, day. Anna has made her way all the way to her boss's office and sits down waiting. In comes Oscar. Mid forties, charming and gloriously American. My golden goose. I take great, great, great offense to that. Three scripts in one year. You kidding? They love you over New York. I'm sure they do. Why did I have to come in? I don't want to say. Now that I see you, I don't want to have to say it because you're going to use your Latina force on me and I'll be terrified. <laughs> say it. He wants you back as an AD. No, 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 no. I write. Is all I do. I write the damn thing and then somebody else takes it away and does something. I ain't got nothing to do with that. They loved the Finca. Loved it. It's green lit. It's being cast. They fucking loved it. But they want you on the ground, consulting, translating, negotiating, the lot. No. It's a two-month shoot. No. It's your baby. I have a million babies. I wasn't there when they shot the Indian wife. I wasn't there when they shot Blackbird. I ain't about to be there for this. How do you say, but por favor? No. Pedro might roll back if he can't, you know, have you there. He said he knows it's biographical. Ugh. Biographical. So he wants you there, consulting, second AD. You're on the verge of greatness. At, at the BS. Yeah, no, that was not right. But still, please. I have kids. They have a father. The point of me becoming a writer was that I wouldn't have to be on set. Well, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Is the whole team American? As gringo as they come, baby. Are you going to be there? I will, but not for long. Just to see it all take shape. I trust Pedro enough at this point. Please. It's just two months. Fine. But don't let this become the norm. Yes! Internal, Anna's house, living room, day. 
Anna is hugging her boys. I won't be long, I promise. I love you both so, so much. And you and your dad will have lots of fun, right? I love you, Mom. Me too, hijo. Me too. I love Internal airport departures day. Oscar is meeting Anna at the check-in desk. Why do we have to go to New York first? Meeting Pedro. Meeting the brass. And then down to location. I hate the whole bloody film industry. I know. That's why you're so good at manipulating it. They check in. Internal plane day. Anna is sleeping. Oscar is reading a script. Internal. Pedro's apartment. Night. Pedro, a dashing 40-something man, is opening the door of his fancy New York apartment to Oscar and Anna. He hugs Anna first. My favourite writer! Liar! That's true. I am a liar. What's up? I present to you Oscar Jones, the pain in the ass I just had to cross the Atlantic with. Pedro greets Hi. Oscar. So, uh, back on set. How's it feel? Terrible. She loves it. Yeah, she does. Anna tries to look grumpy, but fails as the two men grin at each at her expectantly. Okay, okay, I did miss this. Pedro <laughs> hugs her again. Yes, we have Anna back. Woo! <laughs> Internal plane day. Pedro, Anna, and Oscar Oscar are on the plane, each working. External Flores Airport Day. Pedro, Anna, and Oscar come out of the airport together. Internal Hotel Lobby Day. Pedro, Anna, and Oscar are checking into a hotel. Uh, meet you at dinner for seven. The other two nod at him. External Flores Restaurant by the Lake Day. Pedro, Oscar, and Anna are sitting together having dinner, laughing about old times. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you remember uh, that god awful hotel we're staying at? Remember? I still dream about it. Where was this? Uh, we, we, we were shooting uh, an independent movie. Now, this was this was about 15 years ago. This was a long time ago. And the maggots and the maggots and the cockroaches, it was it was disgusting. I mean, it, it, it was Texas, but you know, we're expecting American standards, so but, you know. <laughs> How's Rita? She's fine. We're trying for another baby. She maybe promised not to get kicked in the balls. <laughs> Good. I'll kick you in the head instead. <laughs> Internal hotel lobby day. Anna is waiting for the men at the lobby. She looks around, slightly nervous, keeping keeps checking her watch. The receptionist notices. Uh, is there something I can help you with, Senorita? No, it's just... Being back is, it's difficult. I, uh, I haven't been back in Flores in a long, a long time. Ah, you used to live here? Yes, we, ca we came here after um, our village was destroyed. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear. Um, but you see, Guatemala has changed a lot. I'm sure it has. I wonder if it's changed enough for me. Pedro and Oscar step out of the lift. Anna joins them. External, Finca, Day. Pedro, Anna and Oscar are exploring a location, taking pictures. Anna, what do you think? Anything like you wrote it? Nothing like I wrote it, but it'll do. See, this is why you shouldn't have writers on set with you. Hey, you wanted her. Anna looks around, looks towards the jungle looming in the distance. She shudders, turns away. She points to the sky. Looks like rain, amigos. The two men are huddled together, deep in conversation. External Flores Street Day. Anna is walking through the colourful streets of Flores, looking at the food and shops. One of the merchants looks at her a bit too long. He picks up his phone, takes a picture of Anna. External Flores Restaurant by the Lake Night. Another dinner for Pedro, Anna and Oscar. So, you used to live here, no? I did, for like a split second before, uh, before I went to Europe. You still have family here? No, I don't think so. 
Uh, maybe a few distant cousins, aunts. Where did you live before? Further up north. Patan has always been very sparsely populated. We used to live in a tiny little village. That's so cool. That's cool. Sorry. Is it, Gringo? It was pretty cool. I get to do the whole immigrant mom thing with my kids. Yes, I remember that. Uh, did you give them the speech of when I was your age? Yes, of course. That's my favorite thing to do. Oh, so you want a new toy? When I was your age, do you know what I played with? A rock. Yes, a rock. <laughs> my mommy used to say that I had no shoes. No shoes? Did you want more shoes? I, I had no shoes. <laughs> So much fun messing with them like that. You get to install that that lifelong immigrant kids guilt into them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I still carry that. It's quite heavy. Good, you spoiled Americanized brat. <laughs> <laughs> Internal hotel lobby day. Anna is waiting once more. The receptionist come out of comes out of the back office, greets her. Ah, uh, Senorita, I have a message for you. Uh, one moment. Uh, here, a uh, gentleman called and said to say to you, uh, just take a year of Amanita. I thought it was a lovely gesture. Anna gasps with shock, then looks around, terrified. Who called? Do you have his number? Uh, no, I'm, I'm afraid not. I, I think it was a payphone. If he calls again, tell me immediately. Try to, try to put him through to me. Of course, senorita. Anna hides behind a column so she can't be seen from the street, then looks around in a panic. Like I shouldn't have come. Fuck. Pedro taps her on the shoulder, makes her jump. Why so tense? No, it's fine, it's fine, all good. Where did she stay? Uh, into the wild. Great, fantastic. External, jungle path, day. Pedro, Anna and Oscar are stalking through the jungle. You must, uh, you must know the jungle. No, it constantly changes and uh, we didn't live here exactly. We lived closer to the border. Uh, by Tika? Yeah, yeah. Um, so so we, we have the permit for this whole area. I mean, what do you think? The whole sacrificing could buy the rock over there. It would mean it wouldn't be too hard to get the equipment up, so it's better if we all climb up that way. No. If you want my honest opinion, no. I think further down was better. You're gonna set up at like four AM if you climb all the way up here. Back there, it was only just an hour's trek. Yeah, good point. Oscar has finally caught up with them out of breath. <sighs> How do you do this, guys? I think in point. Yeah, that's the other. Internal, hotel room, day. Anna is working in her room. A knock on the door. She gets up carefully. The way she moves makes it clear she's waiting for a fight. And she'd know how to fight back. She's picking up a knife from the counter, holds it out, then slowly, vigilantly, vigilantly opens the door a tiny bit. Who is it? So you. She sighs in relief, then hides the knife in her belt and lets Pedro in. So, are you ready for dinner? Yeah, just one second. She bends, bends over to pick up her jacket and Pedro notices the knife sticking in her belt. Let's go. He looks at her, curious. Internal, hotel, restaurant, night. Pedro and Anna are sitting down for dinner. Is Oscar not coming? No, I said he needs the night off. Mm, well... So I haven't had a proper chance to catch up, you know, with you properly. How does it feel being back? Weird, wrong, scary, wonderful, all mixed together. I think I'm seeing ghosts everywhere. But I try to tell myself that I'm overreacting and being paranoid. When was the last time you went to Chile? Um, about five years ago. You know, my mother's funeral felt weird, wrong, scary. Wonderful. How's Ireland? Peaceful and calm and cold. I live on top of a hill in a tiny village. Picturesque village with a view of mountains, the ocean, and a green field of sheep. The dream. Mm, but not yours. You're still stuck in New York, right? Yeah, um, 
I, I don't think I can ever leave. Yeah, that's what I think as well. I could never leave Ireland. External, dirt road day. Pedro is driving. Oscar is in the front seat. Anna in the back. Internal, car day. Pedro looks back at Anna, who stares out of the window, looking nervous. Getting close to home, are we? Too close. <laughs> Feels weird, doesn't it? Yes. Then why did you write about it? I didn't think I'd have to face it up close. Writing is therapeutic. Shooting is, well, not. <laughs> but suddenly the path is blocked by another jeep. Oscar looks at Pedro, then back at Anna. Anna pulls out her knife, but keeps it hidden behind her back. What's this? Be careful. Yeah, I'll, I'll deal with it. She puts her hand on his shoulder. Listen to me. Under no circumstances are you to give them my name. And you cannot give them your name. Do not give them a single name. Is that understood? He looks back at her, slightly worried. I don't understood. I won't. Promise me. Yeah, I, I won't. I won't. He gets out of the car. External, dirt road, day. Pedro gets out of the car, approaches the group of men standing around the jeep, blocking the road. Amigos, que ya te pensado aquí? One man, Jorge, steps out in front of the car, then smiles. Eres americano? No. Don't lie to me and your gringo friend. You don't want any trouble. What do you have in the back? A beautiful gringa in case you get bored. And what's her name? Pedro looks back at his own car. He can see Anna shaking her head. What do you need to know? I'd like to know. Look, I don't think you need to know. Look, we have to get through here, and if you want money, I can give you some. But quite... He is interrupted when one of the men puts a gun to his head. No, gringo. No money. At least not now. Vamos! Internal car day. Anna shrieks as she watches Pedro be put in the other car. Then she hides her knife back in her belt. Oscar starts to get out, but she holds him back. Do not tell them who I am. Is that clear? Stay cool. You're Americans. This law will be over very soon. Oscar nods in his panic and the two men approach their car, guns cocked. Get out. Both Oscar and Anna get out of the car. External, dirt road day. Oscar and Anna get out of the car and have their faces covered with hoods right away. Jorge looks at Anna for a long time. Then they all get into his car. Internal, jungle camp, day. Jorge jumps out of the car, then lets his men get the three hostages, Pedro, Oscar and Anna, out. Be careful with her. She bites. Internal camp, room, day. Oscar, Pedro and Anna are shoved into a dark room. <coughs> Pedro, Oscar, are you still here? Yeah. What the fuck? What the fuck? Anna manages to get her knife out, cuts the rope holding her hands together. Then she takes off her hood. She does the same for the other two men. Oscar looks around in a complete panic. Pedro is slightly calmer, but looks scared. Anna is surveying the whole room. She goes to the back wall, punches it expertly to test its strength with her elbow. Then she rattles at the bars on the only tiny window there is. She goes to a corner, examines the bucket of water and a hole on the ground, no. sniffs, disgusted. There is a mattress on the floor, which she kicks. Lastly, she goes to the door they were sh just shoved through, looks closely at the hinges. No, what the fuck are you doing? Stop, cut. <laughs> Can we cut for two seconds? Hello, Davis. Hi, Hi guys. <laughs> Sorry for the mix-up. <laughs> it is <clears throat> awkward. Ryan was very kindly filling in for you, but welcome on board. We're on page 18, please. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, and you are Pedro. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can we go back to... Um, Anna manages to get her knife out, so I have a clean cut. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Continue. Yeah. You're good to go, Dave. Good to see you. <laughs> you too, Bill. You too. Anna manages to get her knife out, cuts the rope holding her hands together. Then she takes off her hood. She does the same for the other two men. 
Oscar looks around in a complete panic. Pedro is slightly calmer, but looks scared. Anna is surveying the whole room. She goes to the back wall, punches it expertly to test its strength with her elbow. Then she rattles at the bars and the only tiny window there is. She goes to the corner, examines a bucket of water and a hole in the ground, sniffs, disgusted. There is a mattress on the floor, which she kicks. Lastly, she goes to the door they were just shoved through, looks closely at the hinges. What the fuck are you doing? Looking at the hinges. We were just... We were... We were just... We were fucking kidnapped. Yes. Then why the fuck are you looking at the hinges? Anna shoves the door slightly and lifts it up a bit, but it doesn't budge. Because if we can get the door off its hinges, then we are good to go. What the fuck are you talking about? We were just kidnapped. Calm down, Oscar. Pedro has been pacing. He has a fucking point. What the hell are we supposed to do? Calm down. Sit down. Both of you. The men pace for a while, but a strict look from Anna gets them to fall in line. They sit on the mattress on the floor. Anna stands over them, looking like a drill sergeant. Now, we have to make a few things clear. Oscar is still whispering under his breath. What the fuck? What the fuck? What Oscar. the fuck? Oscar! Focus! He looks up at her, swallows hard, but manages to focus. We can panic later. Right now, we need to focus. We have a few things. We have water. Don't drink it unless you absolutely have to. They will bring us food, and they will want to negotiate with the Americans. You are both American citizens, so that will be the main avenue that they want to focus on. Next, under no circumstances are you to call me by the name that you know me by. Okay? I am Maria. Maria Estrada. But I am not an American citizen, because that... If they try to negotiate for me with the Americans, that'll come out pretty quick. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. What the fuck are you talking about? How the fuck do you know all this? Why are you not Anna? What the fuck? Pedro, it is really important that you let me finish and that you remember everything I'm about to say to you. All the information I'm about to give you. It could save both of your lives. Now shut up and listen. She starts walking in front of them, looking more and more like a military leader. And remember everything I say to you. First, we have water. Don't drink it. Second, that door won't budge. So we're going to have to wait to see if a better opportunity of escape comes up, comes, comes about. If not, we must rely on your government to get you boys out. Third, I am not... Ana Cabrera. I am Maria Estrada. I am just a lowly little assistant. Nothing more. Is that clear? The men both Perfect. nod. Boy, you will obey anything and everything they say to you. The main point of this operation is to keep you both alive as long enough, keep you both alive long enough so your government can get you out. What about you? Don't interrupt. This is important. You have to stay alive, no matter what happens. Fifth, I have sons. I have two children. They are currently staying at 305 Edenmore Drive, Rohini, Dublin. You will memorize this address, and you will go to them, and you will tell them what happened to their mother. This is why you must survive. They deserve to know. This is too much for Pedro. He gets up. What the fuck are you talking about? Why would you die? You motherfucker brought me here. You owe me this. Now sit down and listen. Because there's not a lot of time before they start doing whatever they want to do. So sit. Listen. Don't fucking interrupt me again. Now. Sixth. As soon as they have negotiated for your release with your government, you will go and you will not look back. You will go to Ireland. You will go to my kids. You will not mention that I was taking hostage as well when the gringos get you out. Because A, they will not want to waste resources on me. And B, if these guerrillas find out, they will definitely kill me. Está claro? Is that clear? 
Pedro and Oscar both throw their hands in the air in frustration, but nod. She puts her hands on both her shoulders, leans down to them. Do you trust me? Pedro shakes his head. Oscar nods yes. Anna smiles at Pedro. And why don't you trust me? Who the fuck are you? And why are you suddenly a, a guerrilla fighter badass? You brought me on as a consultant because you said this jungle was my home turf. Watch me play my home turf, motherfuckers. Pedro looks at her for a long time, then slightly nods. Good. From now on, you boys do everything I say. When I say it, with no delay. Because your lives depend on it. Is that clear? Pedro, help me with this door. Oscar, search the dark corners. See if you can find anything at all. Ropes, debris, bones. Fucking bones? Don't be a child. Do as you're told. Now. Anna and Pedro go to the door. She tries to see through a gap, but can't see anything. I need you to try and shove it upwards. Pedro nods, does just that, but the door won't budge. Okay. So the door is definitely a dead end. What do we do? We wait and see. <clears throat> we gather our strength. Here. She takes her knife out, kneels down at the mattress, puts the knife into the mattress to hide it. Keep it hidden. They can't find it. It's our only weapon. Who are they? Guerrillas, narcos. How the fuck should I know? If you don't know them, why can't we call you by your name? Because I have family here. Knowing my name would give them leverage over innocent cousins and aunts. You don't want that, do you? No. Good. Oscar has finished searching the darkest corners, but comes up empty. He lets himself fall onto the mattress. Oh my God. I can't believe this is fucking happening to us. Pedro sits next to him, pats his shoulder. Anna stands over them. Who the fuck are you? Maria Estrada. I live in Miami. I'm your assistant. No, seriously. Who the fuck are you? You're... You, this is not you. I don't know you like this. What's the address? What? The address I asked you to memorize. I... I don't know. I will die... Here, and don't look at me like that, Pedro. I will die here. You owe it to my kids to find them, to tell them. Now, what's the address? I, I don't know. Tell us again. 305 Edenmore Drive, Rahini, Dublin 5. 305 Edenmore Drive, Rahini, Dublin 5. Aaron and Jordan. Aaron and Jordan. 305 Edenmore Drive, Rahini, Dublin 05. Good. Why the hell do you think you'll die here? They don't want to split their negotiations. I'm sure. They will want to negotiate with the Americans. Who cares about the Guatemalan who lives in Ireland when they've got a golden duck sitting right there? The famous Pedro Hernandez Garcia, director, womanizer, philanthropist. You're Oscar nominated. Everybody will want you back. Bullshit. You know it's true. In this game of values, I have none. How did they know we were coming? I don't know. Maybe someone at the hotel tipped them off. Maybe they just happened to net us without even intending to. Who knows? But once they know who they have, they will want to get started right away. They might rough you up. You have got to be ready for that when they do that. Stop. Anna and Oscar both look at him, surprised. He gets in Anna's face. I'm, I'm done. I'm asking you for the last goddamn time. Who are you and why do you know all this? She sits down on the mattress with them, looks at them for a long time before she starts her story. I was... Uh, I was one of them. No... 
not directly, but after our village got torched, there was little else to do. Some fighters took me in, trained me. I got out. I got to Ireland. I built a life there. I got to make all my dreams come true. I got to write about wild things until you assholes brought me back. <laughs> Look, listen, boys. I know this sucks. I know. But you're going to be fine. You're Americans. Red, white, and blue got your back. One of and you're rich Americans at that. And one of you, one of you is even a white rich American. I mean, come on. Really? If they bring us food that is non-perishable, save a part of it always. You might need it later. Oh. How do you know? Because <laughs> I'm a badass. She turns around so she can lean on the wall like the two men. Closes her eyes. Rest, boys. Get as much, much rest as you can now while you can. If you stay awake, you just drive yourself crazy. She relaxes, breathes deeply as if meditating. Pedro and Oscar <laughs> share a look. Pedro starts biting his fingernails. Oscar covers covers his face. Internal camp room day. Oscar and Pedro have fallen asleep against the wall. Anna is up by the window, trying to see out, but the frosted glass and bars make it impossible. It's a mierda. Pedro wakes, looks up at her. I never knew. What? The voucher. Past. I wrote a whole story about it. So you were in a death cult uh, too, huh? No, I invented the death cult bit. She sits down by him, looks at Oscar, who's still asleep. This will be hard on you guys. And not you. It's hardest on me, but I'm also the one who can help you get through it the best. They make you hard when they trained you. No, they tried to, but they didn't. That's why I got out. You won't die here, Anna. Uh, sorry, Maria. Uh, you won't. I promise you that. No. You're not in a position to make promises, Pedro. The only thing you can promise me is that you will take care of my boys. And that you will tell them about me. I can't rely on my stupid ex to do that. Tell them. Tell them who their mother was. It becomes emotional fights, tears. No, you tell him yourself. Promise me. Promise me. No, Plamento. He kisses her hand. They both look to Oscar, who's still asleep. Internal, camp, room, day. Oscar, Pedro and Anna are leaning against the wall. The door is open slightly. A tray of three plates is shoved in. The men look to Anna, who carefully goes to the door, ready to pounce. She checks if the door is completely is shut completely, then takes the tray. There are some dry crackers. She takes half of them, puts them to the side. Here. They all sit down to eat. They didn't bring us water. We must avoid that water, water in the bucket over there at all costs. By the way, if you, uh, if you guys need to use the, uh, well, bathroom as a euphemism, but uh, the hole in the ground, have at it, but... Use the bucket water sparingly. As soon as we get to talk to someone, we can try to negotiate for water. Oscar is staring at his plate of rice and beans. What's wrong? How am I supposed to eat? Anna and Pedro share a look. There's no cutlery. <laughs> oh, my love. Oh, my darling. Oh, my sweet summer child, you glorious, innocent wonder. I love you, my beautiful little rainbow here. This is how you eat with your hand. No, no, don't, no, don't just, you don't just grab at it. You'll get your whole hand dirty. You have these three fingers, right? And your thumb, and you grab the food with just the tip. Yeah, uh-huh. And then you shove it in and you push, you, your thumb pushes it into your mouth. Okay, you get food on the palm of your hand, you're doing it wrong. 
God bless you, you wonderful creature. <laughs> First world problems, man. <laughs> Very funny. How am I supposed to know that? Yeah, Pedro, how is he supposed to know that? <laughs> they all, they all laugh at the moment. <laughs> they all laugh at the moment, breaking the tension. Later, when they're finished with their food, Anna breaks one of the plates into shards. She hides the biggest shard with the knife and hides a smaller one in her jeans pocket. She gives a small shard to Pedro. Why not me? Are you willing to stab someone in the eye and gouge it out? Oscar turns away instinctively. Exactly. Trust me. When this is all over, you'll not only be willing to do it, you'll be good at it. Pedro looks at Anna with a mix of wonder and disgust. What's the address? 305 Aidenmore Drive, Rahini, Dublin 5. When they take you out of here, they'll try to intimidate you, tell you that they're going to kill you. They won't. Don't give them a reason to punish you. Do as they say. They are not going to kill you. We still have leverage and time on our side. What are you going to do when they take you out of here? She looks at them, expects an answer. They are unsure. Um, we, um, well, we do everything they say. No reason to punish us. They're not going to kill us. We, we do what they tell us. She's the drill sergeant again, hammering it into the men until their answers are automatic and there is no fear left in their voices. What do you do when they, when they ask who I am? You're Maria Estrada from Miami, you're Oscar's assistant. You say as little as possible when they ask you, let them talk. You don't talk, you let them do the talking. You answer questions with yes or no. How do you answer questions? Yes or no. We don't talk. Will they kill you? No. Even if they stick a gun to your head, do you <laughs> need to be afraid? No. No. Say it. They're not going to kill me. We're not going to get killed. Even if they put a... Fuck! Even if they put a gun to our heads. Why? Why? They need us. We have leverage. It's getting better. Tell me again. They're not going to kill us. We have leverage. Do you need to be afraid? No. 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 They're not going to kill us. Keep going. Tell me again. Internal camp room day. Anna, Pedro and Oscar are still sleeping. From outside, the noise of shouting and footsteps filters in. Wake Anna. She sits up, looks at the two boys, then sneaks over into the dark corner to use the hole. Pedro wakes, but keeps his eyes closed to give her privacy. When she returns, he wakes and sits up with her. Day two. They have to give us water today. Yeah. She leans onto his shoulder. Oscar wakes up behind them, sits up, puts his arms around both of them. What the fuck are we supposed to do now? It'll all start happening soon and you will want this piece back. How are you so calm? I've been through worse. What does that mean? How long have you known me? Three years? Yeah. Yeah. And did you think I just popped into existence then? No, but I didn't think you'd be a... this. Yeah, this is a bit more... This is a bit wilder than what I thought. We make movies. That's what we do. And when you watch those movies about those fighters in the jungle or the survivors trekking through a whole continent or the girls surviving rape and coming out stronger or a mother fighting cancer... Why do you think those stories resonate so much? It's because real people actually go through this stuff. Just because you haven't doesn't mean that no one has. And just because people tell you, don't tell you that they have, doesn't mean that they haven't. She pulls them both in, kisses first Pedro, then Oscar on the forehead. I'm glad to have you boys with me this time. Later, the three of them are sitting on the mattress, Pedro half asleep, Anna meditating. Oscar with his head in his hands. Suddenly, the door is opened. Anna jumps up, immediately ready for a fight. The Behind two me. men scramble up. Behind me. They obey. 
In the door, a man, Miguel, holding a gun at his side, straining his eyes to see into the dark room. Pedro Oscar. What do you need them for? Carrete. Pedro, I've got a key. Pedro. Oh, sorry. What's one? Pedro Hernandez Garcia, no? S.A.S. Oscar Jones, no? Palo Canaras, tu puta. My name is Maria Estrada. I'm from Miami. I'm his assistant. Miguel laughs out loud, then points his gun lazily at them. Anna hides the two men behind her. Pedro, aquí, ahora. Anna holds him, but lets him slowly pass, but lets him slowly pass, whispers at him quickly. Remember what I told you, do what you need to stay alive. Do as they say, don't negotiate, not yet. He nods imperceptibly and moves out. External, camp, day. Pedro blinks into the sun and lets Miguel guide him through the guerrilla camp. Internal, camp. Jorge's office, day. Jorge is sitting at his desk. Miguel brings in Pedro. Ah, Pedro, I trust you've had a warm welcome. Pedro gets ready to yell at him, but remembers his training and then takes a breath. Yes. Good. All I wanted was to get to her, but now I have you two to deal with. How do you Americans say, two flies with one swat? You are an unexpected bonus to this operation. I don't follow. I can deal with her later. But for now, we need to deal with you and the money you will bring us. That's the one thing we can always have more of. <clears throat> money. And tell me, what do you say her name was? Her name is Maria Estrada. Jorge looks at Miguel, who laughs. Jorge joins his laughter. <laughs> Maria Estrada. And where is Maria Estrada from? She's from Colombia, <laughs> but she grew up in Miami. She's Oscar's assistant. She's no one. Hmm. In 48 hours, she's managed to train you. Remarkable. We should put a camera in there. Some of our best fighters aren't as well trained after two weeks as you are after two days. Here. He gestures for Miguel to bring water. Drink. Pedro looks at the water eagerly. Really, it's okay. Drink. Water is being brought to your friends right now as well. I'm sure she taught you. I have no reason to kill you. Yet. Pedro drinks eagerly. Good. Now, I have two problems. I have to deal with... <laughs> and I have to deal with you. And I want to deal with you first. But because it is going to hurt her, what is going to happen? And that's the point. Now sit down, Mr. Film Director. Time to get on camera. Internal camp. Jorge's office. Day. A camera is whirring, pointed at Pedro, who is reading his ransom note. My name is Pedro Hernandez Garcia. I was taken hostage on the 2nd of May, along with Oscar Jones, on the road to San Andreas. We are both American citizens. We are, we are kept in safe and sanitary conditions but our suffering will increase if the demands are not met. Three million dollars per person, paid through the wire transfer details provided to you. Don't think this is an opening offer. This is the final word. He looks up, tears in his eyes. Jorge leans down to him. Oh, Pedro, mi amigo, don't cry. Maria would be very disappointed if you did. Internal camp, room day. Oscar is pacing. Anna is waiting by the door. Finally, the door is opened and Pedro is shoved in. Oh, thank God. Oscar and Anna both hug Pedro, who hugs them back. Did they bring you water, like you said? Yes, yes, we did get water. Good. Three million per person and no mention of you in the tape. I know. They don't believe that you're Maria. They wanted you. They never wanted us. We're just, we're just an added bonus. Can you fucking explain that, Anna? 
he pushes himself out of her hug, furious. The shock is fading. All that's left is anger. What the fuck is going on here? You said they didn't know you. Well, they clearly fucking do. They said it was you they wanted. You! Why would you want? Why would they want you? No more fucking lies on it, I swear to God. What are you? She takes a breath and gets ready to answer, but before she can, the door is opened again. Miguel sticks his gun in, points it at, it at Anna. Manos de trust la cabeza, puta. Anna looks at Pedro and Oscar. Be aggressive. Do what you have to do. Survive. She puts her hands behind her head and walks out to Miguel, who immediately pulls her out and slams the door shut. The two men are left in darkness. Oh my God. External, camp, day. Miguel throws Anna to the ground, then handcuffs her hands behind her back, pulls her back up. Are you afraid of me? Miguel pushes her forward. They walk past Jorge's office, further out into the jungle. External, jungle by the camp, day. Miguel brings Anna out into the jungle. Kneel down. Anna does. Jorge, Miguel puts his gun to the back of her head. She doesn't even flinch. Jorge comes out of the shadows. Oh, we can't kill her yet. Why would we do that, Miguel? She's from Colombia, no? Lives in Miami. Is an assistant to a fancy Hollywood producer. Her name is Maria Estrada. He puts his hand on Anna's face, makes her look up at him. Why would we kill an innocent little assistant? Internal, camp, room, day. Oscar is still pacing. Pedro is sitting on the mattress. He has a shard from the plate Anna broke, is carving 305 into the wall. They've killed her. I don't know. Oh my fucking God, they've killed her. Oscar, calm down. I don't fucking know what is happening here. But she knows, she fucking knows them. Yeah, or at least <laughs> they know her. They were looking for her. We just happened to be caught in the crossfire. If she knew she'd be in so much danger coming back down here, why'd you come? I don't know. But I, d I don't think she thought I was going to be as uh, as dangerous she wouldn't have done that if she'd known uh, it would end up. No, she wouldn't have. Fuck, fuck. This is so fucking bad. What was the ransom? Three million for each of us? That's not much. They are going to pay that easily. The us don't, doesn't negotiate with terrorists. They don't pay ransom. But Anna is right. They will get us out. That I'll just pay the six million myself. <laughs> oh, so uh, you're just gonna walk her to a bank? Oh, oh no, wait! You fucking can't. You're in a cell. What the fuck are we supposed to do? How should I know? Our local guide is dead in a ditch somewhere. Fuck! Internal camp room night. Noises of the night filter into the room from the window. Oscar is asleep on the mattress. Pedro is. Has carved almost the whole address. 305 Edenmore Drive, Rahini, Dublin 5, into the wall. He is making the carving deeper, whispers under his breath. Aaron and Jordan, 305 Edenmore Drive, Rahini, Dublin 5. Aaron and Jordan, yeah, they're not going to kill us. We are leverage. We're not going to die. His eyes fall shut. He falls asleep. Shard of the plate still in his hand. Internal camp room night. Pedro and Oscar are deeply asleep. The door is opened silently. Anna is thrown in. She tries to get up but can't. Loses consciousness right there in front of the door. Men don't wake up. Internal camp room day. Pedro wakes up as the, dun as the day dawns outside of the tiny window. He screams when he sees Anna's lifeless form by the door. Oh, Oscar fuck. wakes with a start. They both run to Anna. Oh, fuck. Anna, 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 Anna. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Anna! He turns her over. She has a bruise above her, the eye, but seems okay otherwise. She comes to. Pedro. Pedro pulls her up into a hug. Oscar puts his arm around both of them. What the fuck happened? Get me over there. They help her get to the mattress. 
Is there any water left? Oscar, get some, some water from a bottle. Thank you. What happened here, Anna? What is going on? She looks from one to the other. I owe you an explanation, don't I? I, I think it's safe to say you fucking do. She winches again and she gets herself comfortable, leaning against the wall. Sit down. It's a long story. Flashback. Internal. Hut. Day. Young Anna is crawling out from underneath her bed that Jorge shot at. Her doll is on the ground, a bullet hole in it. I was 12 when they came. Narcos. They had a problem with my father trafficking on a route that they thought that they had a claim over. There was a rift in my family. And rifts in this part of the world always mean blood. Young Anna makes her way out of the hut. External, Anna's old village day. Women crying, children screaming, smoke rising over the huts. Anna walks through the carnage. Where else to go? There is dead. I had only one family left. External, old camp day. Young Anna, a teenager now, is learning to fight with other guerrilla fighters. It's almost cliche, really. I wouldn't. Write it like that if I had the choice, because it would all sound too cheesy. They took me in. I was assigned a patrol close to Flores, a route towards the north. We trafficked everything. External, old jungle path day. Young Anna is patrolling with a caravan of men, gun in hand. We trafficked drugs, humans, violence. She stops, turns to look at the people behind her. Among them, a young mother holding a small child. Everybody thinks that they don't have a choice. But you do. She looks towards the sky. Internal Flores, police station day. Young Anna is being arrested, thrown in a cell with a bunch of other men who eye her with a greedy look. All it takes is your life. One of the men makes a move at her. She jumps up chokes him, then breaks his neck with a single smooth move. The other men back away. A police officer comes running in, sees the dead man on the floor, looks at Anna in shock. I got out because I was willing to do anything and the police saw that. I bribed my way out. I became what all narcos and all of these losers fear and hate the most, una rata. I had something they wanted more than anything. I had Jorge. The nice gentleman who's holding us here. I got asylum in Den Denmark. From there, I got to Ireland. Internal camp room day. Present day. Pedro and Oscar are staring at Anna as she leans back, exhausted. I'm sorry. There are tears in her eyes. She reaches out for the two men, holds their hands. I honestly didn't think it would be this dangerous. I thought he was dead, long dead. I didn't think they were still as strong as they are. I did not pull you into this on purpose, I promise. I swear to God, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. She is openly crying now. The men pull her in, hug her, hold her as she cries. I put both of you in danger. I'm sorry. Shh, shh, shh. It's okay. You didn't do this on purpose. We should have brought you back. It's okay. It's okay. We'll get you through this. I don't know why they're keeping me alive. You said it would hurt you more what's about to happen. Yes. That makes sense. She leans into their hug as they hold on to each other. Internal camp room day. Pedro, Oscar and Anna are in their usual positions, half asleep leaned against the wall. Pedro and Anna are holding hands. What do they do to you? Nothing. Oh, stop them. He wants to hurt me worse than that, he said. They kept me out of the jungle for a few hours, then brought me back. What's going to happen? Somewhere, someone is making hurried phone calls, Pedro. Internal, American Embassy, hallway, day. A DEA agent, Linda, is hurrying towards an office. 
internal American embassy ambassador's office day. Linda comes storming in without knocking. The ambassador, Tony, is in deep conversation with another agent, Brett. They are narcos. They are my job. Don't ice me out. We don't know that. Yes, we fucking do. I know him, Jorge Cabrera. He's been on our radar for two years since he broke out of prison. Don't ice me out. Do you have any idea how much shit we're in the State Department? This guy, an announced winner or something. Nominee. Who gives a fuck? They give us a way to get the Flores cartel once and for all. There are American citizens being held hostage. We can worry about narcos later. But we have to use this opportunity to get them. We have to get the famous dude out alive and unharmed. There's a lot at stake here, and I've got the president breathing down my neck to not make it public. It happened close to Tikal. They're worried about their precious tourists. Let's use that too. That gives us a lot of leverage. Use us. Use the intel we have at the DEA. Let me in on this. Tony and Brett share a look, but relent. Linda takes a seat at the desk. Get your team together. What do we know about this guy? Linda smiles. Internal camp, room day. Pedro, Anna and Oscar are sitting together. The door is opened. They jump up. Anna in front of them again. But Pedro puts his arm in front of her now. Miguel points at Oscar. Oscar, something to go. Oscar looks terrified, but Anna squeezes his hand, encouraging him. Remember what I said? Yes. Internal, camp. Jorge's office, day. Oscar's turn to record a message. Jorge stands behind the camera, looking at him. Internal, camp, room, day. Oscar is returned to the room, hugs his two cellmates. Anna stays standing up while the men sit down. She looks at their tired faces. Then she takes Pedro's hand, then Oscar's hand, pulls them up. She starts singing an upbeat song, starts dancing with them, pulling them along as she goes. The sadness and exhaustion dissolves. The three of them dance and sing together, holding on to each other. Later, Anna sits in the middle, the two men leaning their heads on her shoulders. I bet Rita has found out by now. Don't, Oscar. Don't. Don't even think like that. Don't even go there. I wonder if she told Dylan. Oscar, listen to me. Nothing good comes of this. Nothing. Nothing good comes of making yourself crazy. You have to be strong. She won't tell him. Rita is too strong for that. She will just be holding it together. Moving on with daily life so that Dylan isn't worried. That's exactly what she will do. That's what moms do. Your kids. Your kids have an awesome mom. They have a mom who's a snitch and got their best friends into a situation where they could get killed. They have an awesome mom. They do. You have to be strong for Dylan and Rita, Oscar. You will see them again. I promise. Internal, camp, room, night. Anna is standing by the window. Cold moonlight filters in. Pedro gets up, leaving Oscar asleep on the mattress. Thank you. For what? Lifting us up. I don't know what I'd do without you. The few hours you were gone were the hardest. I don't know why this is happening. Again. You won't have to fight alone this time. She turns, looks up at him. They kiss. I've wanted to do that for a long time. You always seem so... Cold? Badass. I thought you might snap my neck if I tried. I never thought you were actually trying to do that. They laugh. Kiss again. Oscar is taking this pretty hard. We'll be there to help him through it. I can't imagine what you're going through. You must miss your boys. It's Tuesday today. We'd go and get ice cream after school and then go swimming in the river. There's a coffee shop in the village. On Tuesdays, we get ice cream. On Fridays, we get croissants. 
Ian, the owner, has croissants ready for us at 8 a.m. sharp. My coffee is waiting for me before I even pull up. Then the boys run through the forest, pretending to be fighters in the jungle. And I play along because it's innocent when they're, they're pretending. And after all, who better to tell them how to hold a stick gun and hide behind a tree waiting for an attacker? Pedro hugs her. They fight orcs and monsters and zombies in the forest, and they'll never, ever have to fight anyone. He kisses her tears away. External, jungle by the camp, day. Pedro, Oscar and Anna are tied up in the jungle by the camp, all wearing hoods. Jorge walks in front of them, removes their hoods one by one. You'll be interested to know what I have struck gold. He leans down to Anna. Not only are the Americans not interested in rescuing Maria Estrada, they don't even seem to know that you're here. Now, all I have to find out, dear Maria, is just how much this is going to hurt you. He slaps Oscar straight across the face. Anna shrieks. No! Jorge looks at her, considers. Then he puts a knife to Pedro's throat. Jorge, no, no! He smiles. Bring this one back. Miguel takes Oscar away, who protests and screams. I have a phone call with your hostage negotiation team with this afternoon. They want to speak to you, but until then... He smiles at Pedro and Anna. Internal camp, Jorge's office day. Jorge is followed by Miguel, who brings in Anna and Pedro. He shoves Anna to the ground. I have to make one thing clear to you, Pedro. Today, when you speak to your rescuers, you will not mention our dear Maria. If you do, this happens. Miguel punches Anna in the face. You... She ever even existed. Miguel pulls her up, gets his knife out, puts it at her throat. No, please. Fuck, fuck. No, 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 no. no. What's that? Uh, my men have had an eye on her for days now. It gets lonely in the jungle. Should we test her resolve? No. no. Fuck. No. No. You're right. We do not. We are not animals. She's always behaved like a man. This one. Let's treat her like one. Miguel punches her in the gut. She doubles over. You get the picture. You stick to the script today. Clear? Pedro nods. Miguel leaves Anna in the dirt, gets Pedro, walks out, walks him out. Internal camp, room, day. Pedro is pacing. Oscar is sitting down. They don't know she's here. They have to get her out. They have to. We either all go or none of us go. She has a point. What? She's not going to get out, Pedro. You know this. I know it. You have to be fucking shitting me, Oscar. Of course she's going to get out. They could have killed her the second she got here. I don't know what they're keeping her here for, but it's not good. They're sadists. The guy is a sadist. He's keeping her here. He's keeping her to hurt her. He's keeping us to make money. But she... She's a snitch. She says so herself. Do you know what these people do to, to snitches? You can just shut the fuck up. You can just shut the... Fucking shut up, Oscar. I will get her out. If it's the last thing I do, it's either all of us or it's none of us. 305 Edenmore Drive, Rahini, Dublin, 05. What? If it's none of us, then there are two boys somewhere in Ireland waiting for their mom to come home, and she never will. And they will never know why. She made us promise. She made you promise. Keep your fucking promise. Internal American Embassy Situation Room Day. Tony, Brett, Linda and a few other agents are gathered around a table with aerial photographs of a jungle. We've suspected them to have made camp in this area for a long time. We'll try to triangulate the call this afternoon, but if they're not actually where we're looking at, we may miss them. Okay. We are sweeping the area from north to south. Can't be more than a day's travel from San Andreas. That would uh, that would include the whole of this part here, the whole national park. 
Yes, but we're certain that they wouldn't want to go too close to Tikal or any other major tourist hotspots. They want to stay under the canopy. We can only hope that we're able to triangulate. Okay, correct. You leave the negotiation. Let's hope to get Pedro and Oscar on the phone. I want to know they're alive so I can calm everyone the fuck down. Good. Um, do we have a team to go in in case it gets ugly? It won't get ugly. We will have a nice and clean handle. Who do we have to go in in case it gets ugly? Uh, the president promised me Colonel Aragon is available and standing by. It won't come to that. We'll see. I remember you in Bogota, Brett. Fuck you, Linda. Fuck you. Internal camp room day. Oscar and Pedro are sitting down. Pedro is carving at the wall again. The door is opened. Anna is thrown in. She's worse this time. Badly beaten. They rush to her. Help her up. This call better be good today, boys. This call better say both of your asses. Internal camp. Jorge's office day. Anna is kneeling off to the side. Her mouth gagged. Pedro and Oscar sit in front of Jorge's desk. A sat phone is set up in the middle of the desk. The phone starts ringing. Jorge grins, answers it, puts it on speaker. Internal American Embassy Situation Room Day. Brett is leaning over the table, the phone system on loudspeaker. Linda is off to the side, watching him carefully. Alternate, both parties on phone. Pedro stares at Jorge, then at Anna, who shakes her head. Hello? Hello? Is that Pedro? P Pedro Garcia? Yes, it's me. Uh, and Oscar Jones, is there with you? Yes, we're both safe. Have you been harmed or, or mistreated? Pedro looks to Anna again, who is bleeding out of a wound on her forehead. No, no we haven't been. Okay, Pedro, Oscar, we have we would come to an agreement. We will be able to get you out of there, but you have to do exactly as you're told. Okay, Oscar, l let me hear your voice. I'm here. I'm I'm fine. Nothing has happened to me. My wife. Did you tell her? Is she okay? Yeah, your wife is fine. Uh, we offered to fly her out, but she said she didn't want to get upset your son. He doesn't know. Oh, yep, yeah, and with any luck, you won't have to know until you're safe, okay? Jorge smiles at Pedro, who cannot take his eyes off Anna. Anna keeps shaking her head at him. Pedro struggles. He keeps looking from Anna to the phone and back again. Jorge senses something is off. Miguel grabs Anna tighter. Look, we're going to get you both out, and you, and you can put it all behind you. All of us? Yes, both of you are going to get out of this. Pedro throws one last look at Anna. She closes her eyes, shakes her head, but he makes his decision. He speaks as quickly as he can while Jorge struggles to end the call and Miguel punches Anna to the ground. Oscar screams. They have a woman here. Her name is Anna Cabrera. She used to be an informant for the police. She lives in Ireland. You have to get her out too. Anna Cabrera, you have to save her too. She has to be saved. He gets cut off as Miguel pulls him off the chair and Jorge hangs up the phone. He kicks Pedro in the stomach. That, that was not smart. Internal American Embassy Situation Room, day. Linda looks at Brett. Did he just say there was another one there? Yes. What the fuck? Did he just say her name is Anna Cabrera? Internal, camp, room, day. Oscar gets thrown into the room on his own. He gets up, punches the door. No, Pedro, Anna, no! Internal, camp, Jorge's office, day. Pedro and Anna both on their knees. Anna is still gagged. That was not a smart thing to do, Pedro. But I have already promised the gringa that you would be safe no matter what happens. So, what to do? What to do? He smiles at Anna. Just then, a voice from the camp drifts in. Miguel comes running in. You're muted. 
Okay. Boss, they found us. There's a helicopter on the way. Jorge looks at Anna, slaps her across the face. Get the men ready. We're moving out. Internal, American Embassy, Ambassador's Office, Day. Linda comes storming in, followed by Brett. Tony turns to them. What? We have a fuck-up by Brent, but I have a new way in. It was not a fuck-up. We've triangulated the claw. There's a chopper on the way. By the time it gets there, all we'll find is an empty camp. These guys know that the train like the back of their hand, idiot. You know what, Linda? Keep the bickering for later. What is the play here? The chopper won't find shit, but we haven't asked it on the ground we didn't know we had. Anna Cabrera. Linda pulls out an old file. Anna Cabrera was working with local law enforcement almost 13 years ago. She's the one who gave them the information about the cartel in the first place. If she's with them, then they have a good chance of surviving, because she knows the train better than anyone. Right now, they're on the run, which makes them vulnerable, but if she's the one that I think she is, that means she'll be able to find a way out. Ask the colonel to have the ground troops ready. We have to sweep the area. A chopper will give us away, but foot soldiers won't. You heard her. Get to work. External jungle day. The men are guarding Oscar and Pedro. Miguel is dragging an unconscious Anna while Jorge comes up from behind. External jungle camp. Night. The men have made camp in the jungle. Jorge is sitting with his men. Pedro and Oscar are tied to a tree. Anna is tied up and unconscious nearby. Anna. Anna. She stirs. Anna. She wakes up, rolls over, groaning. Anna. She manages to sit up despite her being tied up, scoots her way over to the men. Are you okay? I live. Why did you do this? You could be out of here by now. I can't. He's right. It's either all of us or none of us. We wouldn't have even survived this far if it weren't for you, Anna. We're in this together. She leans on his shoulder. We have to find a way out. They're looking for you now. No. They're looking for us now. She nods. External, jungle, day. The whole group is marching again. As they walk, Anna walks, works to get the rope around her hands loose, and she tries to reach her jean pocket to get at the shard of china she still has. Pedro catches her doing it, realises he still has his as well. Oscar smiles at both of them. External, jungle camp, night, another camp. Oscar leans over to Pedro and Anna, who are now all tied to a tree together. You got yours? Anna nods. Pedro, I know you're more into Anna than to me right now, but can you reach my back pocket? Pedro struggles, but manages. You have the... Um... I sure do. But the eye gouging, I don't know. What's our plan, Anna? In the morning, give me, give me the knife. We cut our ropes, but we have to keep pretending like we still got them on. On my signal, we break away. They'll be shooting at us. So we have to find a moment that works and terrain that works. Pedro scoots around, getting the knife from Oscar's pocket towards Anna, who turns and picks it up, cutting her rope, then cutting the men's. Keep your hands together. Hold the rope with your hands. Your life depends on this. They both nod. External, jungle, by a waterfall, day. The whole group is walking again. Anna looks around. They are walking on a path by a waterfall that looks steep but survivable. She looks at Pedro and Oscar, nods ever so slightly. Now, jump! She waits for Pedro and Oscar to jump, then stabs Miguel in the side before jumping too. Screams follow her as she dives underwater. External, jungle, River by the waterfall day, Pedro, Oscar and Anna are swimming, screams echoing, gunshots blasting. Keep going! External jungle, river day, Pedro, Oscar and Anna have reached calmer waters. She swims to the shore. We have to get away from the river because they will try to follow us. Let's go! They scramble out of the water, run into the jungle, following Anna. External, edge of jungle day, Anna carefully makes her way to the edge of the jungle, looking out into the fields beyond. She signals for Oscar and Pedro to follow her. It looks like there's a village. Go. External village day. Anna, Pedro and Oscar make it to the edge of the village. A young girl spots them, runs off. Let me do the talking. 
internal village hut day. Anna, Pedro and Oscar come in, settle down. There is a man, a village elder, awaiting them. ¿De quién están todos oyendo? Narcos. ¿Por qué te están quedando? For ransom. He nods. Nosotros no tenemos amor por los narcos. Y gringos en la selva. They're looking for the men. ¿Y usted? Yo no soy gringa. He nods. Mi hijo te puede llevar a los soldados. Gracias. External village. Day. Pedro, Oscar, and Anna emerge from the hut. A young man, Fernando, comes up to them. You are Americans. They are. I've seen soldiers in the jungle. Uh, they are looking for some. Us. Uh, they are about two hours away. I can take you. He shoulders a machine gun. Anna looks at him. Do you have a spare one? If the narcos find us first, it will get ugly and... They will need protection. Fernando looks at her, then nods. He goes into a hut, brings out another AK and two magazines. Hold on. Why do you have to fight? Pedro, I have to pay the price. I will not let these people suffer because of what I did. What I am. What are you talking about? Isn't it bad enough that I got you into this mess? Jorge will not stop hunting me until either he is dead or I am. Why? He's my brother. I betrayed him. I'm to either complete the betrayal or die for my sins. Pedro looks at the gun, then at Oscar, who just shakes his head. If we had a camera about now, that would make an awesome scene. I greenlight this movie so fast. External village day. Fernando, Anna, Pedro and Oscar are making their way to the edge of the village. In the distance, at the edge of the jungle, there is movement. Anna gestures for them to stop, crouches down. Fernando comes forward to her. Gringos. No, we have to drag the fight away from the village. Do the trees come in closer anywhere? Yes, uh, on the south side. Let's go. Maybe we can get around to them, or at least take the fight into the forest. They crouch down, run through the houses until they get to a few trees. External, jungle by the village, day. Anna and Fernando check their guns. Oscar and Pedro look scared. Keep close to the ground. When the shooting starts, lie flat down, but keep movies. moving. Always keep moving away from the gunfire. Crawl as fast as you can, and as far as you can. The fight will draw the attention of the soldiers. They will come, and you will be saved. She leans down to Oscar, kisses his forehead. Rita is waiting for you. You'll get out and you'll have another baby and it'll all be awesome, I promise. She kisses Pedro. Take my kids for an ice cream. If they want chocolate, they can have as much as they like. But they have to brush their teeth properly. He laughs through, their, through his fear. I would have liked you, Pedro. She kisses him again. Then she turns the safety off, gestures for the three men to follow her, and goes deeper into the jungle. External, jungle by the village, day, deep jungle. Anna, Pedro, Oscar and Fernando are stalking through the jungle. A twig breaks. You know what to do. They get down. A gunshot breaks the silence. Then all hell breaks loose. Anna and Fernando shoot, fight as Pedro and Oscar crawl away. Pedro looks back at Anna one last time. She has her back to a tree, shooting. She catches his eye. I love you. Run, idiot! External village, day. Soldiers, both American and Guatemalan, are coming into the village, shouting orders, securing buildings. Pedro and Oscar come running out of the jungle. It's us. We're here. Here. Oh, thank God. External, jungle by the village, day. Back in the firefight, Fernando and Anna are fighting, shooting and advancing. Anna leans out, shoots and hits Jorge in the stomach. He groans, falls down. She goes to him, gets her knife out. Te quiero, hermano. Perdóname. Te quiero, hermano. She hugs him. 
tears streaming down her face. I love you, little sister. She stabs him in the neck. But the fight is not over. Shots are still being fired all around her. She ducks down, kisses Jorge on the forehead and continues the fight. Internal, American Embassy, Ambassador's Office, Day. Pedro is pacing. Oscar is sitting with his head in his hands. Tony is sitting behind his desk. I get it, but most likely she's dead. I don't give a fuck. Without her, we'd be dead too. Sounds like without her, you'd never even have gotten into this mess. Oh, that's, that's bullshit. Look, the fact still stands. She's a Guatemalan citizen, resident in Ireland. I'm not wasting American taxpayer money to mount a daring rescue that will lead to nothing. The Irish government won't for shit either. And the Guatemalan? She's a snitch. Getting killed in the jungle? They have that a dozen times a week. Don't fucking call it that. Linda comes in with a file. Looks from Pedro to Oscar, then to Tony. Oh no, I'm late for the fight. Well, this is Linda Bennett, our DEA attache in the country. She was the one who got the boots on the ground. If you want to thank anyone for your rescue, it's her. No, thank director thanks to Anna. Um, we have intelligence, Ambassador. Oh, yeah? Jorge Cabrera is dead. Pedro gasps. Oscar looks up. They found him in the jungle. No sign of Anna. She's disappeared. She's alive. We have to find her. All you have to find is a flight to New York. No, I'm not going to New York. I'm going to Dublin. 305 Edenmore Drive, Rahini. Dublin. Internal, Dublin Airport, day. Oscar and Pedro make their way out of Dublin Airport. Internal, 305 Edenmore Drive, day. A cosy Dublin home. Pedro and Oscar are sitting awkwardly on the couch. A man... Adam sits in the corner. You're shitting me. No. She was killed in the jungle by a narco who was her brother, whom she had put behind 13 years in bars because she used to be a guerrilla fighter before she came to Ireland. Yeah. You, you have got to be kidding me. No. I wish for her for six years. I have two children with her. I was with her for six years. I think I know if any of this was true. Just because people don't tell you what they've been going through doesn't mean they haven't been through it. I am not letting you tell my fucking kids that. She made us promise. She made us promise that her boys would know her. And she truly was. You can fuck off right there. If you think I'm letting you, my children, know that their mother was a fucking murderer. She was a hero. She was a goddamn hero who saved our lives a million times over. She was a fighter and a beautiful woman. She was everything, and her boys deserve to know how amazing their mom was. They know all, all they need to know about her. She'd rather fuck off into the jungle than stay here with her children. For what? To make a movie? Because she always thought she was... Better with all their fancy Hollywood bullshit anyway. Pedro gets it gets in his face. Oscar stands up, holds him back. How dare you? You fucking Pedro, it's enough. Stop. Stop. Look, we just we promised her that we would tell the boys about her. Tell them how or, or at least tell them the truth. She died saving our lives. She died in a car crash when she was on holiday which she went on because she didn't love her boys enough to take them with her. Pedro turns away, kicks the couch. Oscar stares, stares at Adam, incredulous. You've got to be shitting me. Get out of my house. Internal, studio, day. An interview is being set up. Pedro is sitting down, getting a microphone pinned on. He is being interviewed by a woman. Pedro Bastia. Director, filmmaker, head of the charity Barefoot is here to talk about today to talk about his daring escape in the Guatemalan jungle that had us all on the edge of our seats a few months ago. Pedro, thank you so much for doing this. It must be hard to talk about. 
Yes, it is. I wouldn't have made it if I didn't have friends with me who helped me. And of course, the special forces who pulled us out. We understand you lost your friend, Ana Cabrera. She was a writer you'd worked with previously. Uh, I don't think... I like to think I, I didn't lose her. I like to think she's in Ireland right now, where she lives. I like to think she's having ice cream today with Aaron being cheeky and Jordan jumping in the river. They're running through the forest, the three of them, playing fighting. Anna and her two boys. He wipes his tears, looks out the window. Internal, Oscar's house, day. Pedro is sitting with Oscar. Rita comes in, five months pregnant. How are you keeping, honey? I can't, I can't cope. She puts her hand on Oscar's shoulder. Oscar said. I'm, I'm not, I'm going to go back. Where? Guatemala. You're kidding. No, I'm going to find her and I will make the finca. It was her story. It, it should be told. Don't be stupid, Pedro. This is ridiculous. I'll find her. You're insane. If it was the other way round, Oscar, if it were you and I were lost, <laughs> if, it were you, if you and I were lost, would she ever stop, even for just a second? Would she stop? Internal, American Embassy, Ambassador's Office, Day. Pedro is sitting calmly in front of Tony's desk. I never want to see you again. I thought I told you. I don't care what you tell me. My charity is establishing an office here. I just so happen to have a charity that operates in Mesa America. And I just so happen to think the first of our charitable contributions should go to the village that had a gunfight at its borders a few months ago. Forget about it. Linda comes in, stops dead in her tracks. Well, 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 thanks, boy. You back for more already? He was just leaving. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Linda, I was just leaving uh, with you. Um, a word? Linda looks from Tony to Pedro, smiles. She puts a file on Tony's desk. I'm taking an early lunch break to go for a private lunch, Tony. She follows Pedro out. Internal, cafe, day. Pedro and Linda are sitting down. Why are you back? I owe it to her. She's alive. Uh, I have to find her. I've heard a lot about Anna Cabrera. She was a bit of a legend among the narcos down here. She was even on our radar for a while before she got out and got asylum in Europe. But it's been months since she hasn't resurfaced. If she is alive, she's not making herself known to us. Um, if she contacted us, I could get her immunity, get her to the States or back to Ireland even, but she's disappeared. What about Jorge's men? Are you tracking them? See, that's the thing. That is what makes me agree with you that she is alive. She pulls out her phone. This is classified stuff and you never saw it. Is that clear? I have no eyes. Good. Look, here is an aerial of the camp that we've been looking at. It was run by one of Jorge's men, Miguel, whom you've met. This is August, and this is September. Notice anything? Pedro we either, have, we either have a new cartel, a new player in town, or someone is cleaning house. This is our second burned down camp, and we have fewer and fewer intercepts from Sicarios that used to run with Jorge. Someone is waging a war against the gorillas, and my bosses absolutely love our Phantom. If they could, they'd pin a medal on her this instant. They have no idea who it is, and I get left out of the office if I say it's her. It's her. Oh, I've seen what she can do. So have I. What do you need from me? Bring me back to the village you picked me up from. Have you been back there? No. My boss wants me to focus operations further north. We have to keep the tourist area clean. That's our objective. Well, you have yours. I have mine. What are you going to do? I have a charity that brings shoes to poor communities in the third world. That's a good enough reason to go to poor villages here and ask if anyone has seen the love of my life. No? I can't wait to meet this chick. 
external village day. Pedro drives a jeep into the village they were fighting in. Children gather round. Charity workers get out of the jeep with Pedro, but he makes straight for the elder's hut. Internal, village, hut, day. The elder is sitting down, welcoming Pedro in. Has vuelto. Por qué? <laughs> Do you know where she is? En este momento? No. What about your son? The elder smiles at him. External, jungle, day. Anna and Fernando are cleaning their guns. Around them, several several other guerrillas are resting. ¿A dónde vamos? Back. These guys need a rest. We only have one big offensive left before Christmas. I need to go to Florida, so I have to get in touch with the DEA. It's my only way out at this point. So you will... You will just leave again? Tengo hijos. But suddenly, a scream echoes in, fr in from the border of their camp. Everyone scrambles to their feet as a shootout begins. Fernando and Anna scramble to get to their feet. External, village, day. Pedro is taking a break at the edge of the village, staring out into the jungle. He blinks, looks again. Then he gasps, starts running towards the jungle. Out of the jungle comes Anna, Fernando and the rest of her guerrillas. Anna! Anna! She stops, cocks her gun, but then sees who it is. She drops her gun, runs towards Pedro. Pedro! They fall into each other's arms, hug, kiss. Oh my God! Oh my God, you're alive! Oh my God, I love you, I love you! What are you doing here? I've come to save you. I don't need saving. I know, but... but um. She kisses him again. Come on, let's go inside. We can talk. Internal village, hut, day. Pedro, Fernando and Anna are sitting together. So, so you're fighting narcos in the jungle now? Fernando and I had been tracking Miguel for months. I knew this village wouldn't be safe if they had a chance to catch their breath. I owe this to these people. I can't get out. The Cartes them has their fingers everywhere. If I even so much as try to book a flight, I get tagged. I have to clean up before I go. And she's the only one who knows where he was. We've never had so many weapons, so many resources. All right, honey, no need to show off. I just want to get home. A knock on the door. Linda comes in. Who are you? Linda looks at Anna for a long time, then reaches out to shake her hand. It's an honor to meet you. Oh, yeah? Linda Bennett, DEA. Yep, um, about time we talked. Oh, sorry. Would you boys excuse us? This is a big girl talk. Anna nods to Fernando, who salutes and then moves out. Pedro hesitates, but moves out as well. Linda sits down with Anna. Are you the one who has been tagging and killing the people that I've spent the last five years tracking? I can't possibly answer that. If you were that person, I could get you immunity, an American passport, and a plane to get out of here tomorrow. Well, no, actually, not tomorrow. We've been tracking the route north. So have I. I know. Were you planning on taking on the last of them? I was. Can I do to help? You do it yourself. I've been doing your dirty work for almost a year. I haven't seen my children. I can do anyone. I'm going to go back. I want to go back home. And you come here. You come here you're dangling a way out. But oh, wait, no, wait, no, because I can't. Because there's one last thing. Do you know why I've been in the jungle this whole time? Because you guys are incapable. Do you know why I've had to kill all of them? Because I have been held hostage still by them. I can't go to this jungle because if I try to, I get killed. I am a hostage. How dare, how dare you ask me for one more thing? I have been hostage to their violence since I was 12 years old. How dare you? Ask me to kill for you. 
Linda stands up as well, holding up her hands. I understand. I completely understand. I am. I am just asking for help. Do you know what my brother said to me when I stabbed him in the neck? Te quiero, hermano. Do you know why I've had to stab my own brother? I had to stab him because both of us were hostages to this country, this goddamn country. There's nowhere important, but on the way to everywhere important. I loved my brother, but he was made to kill his own father because of the violence that was always around us. He loved me, but he was made to torture his own baby sister to make me stronger because he knew that one day I'd either have to die or kill. So you tell me, Miss DEA, for what? I'm sorry. Why are you here? To stop the flow of drugs, to take down the Flores Cartel? Well, there you go. I took it down for you. Again! I have two children. I have two little sons. They think their mother is dead. How dare you? She walks out. Linda looks after her. External village day. Pedro is sitting on the edge of the village when Anna joins him, still fuming angry. What was that all about? They want me to kill the last of them. Will you? She sits down next to him, looks out at the jungle. When you met me, you just thought I was just an up-and-coming writer. Hmm. How wrong I was. Right. That's what I was. In that moment, that's exactly what I was. A young mom finally making big steps in her career. That's all I want. That's all I've ever wanted. What did you tell my boys? Your asshole of an ex. Never even let us see them. Of course not. What would you do? I don't know. You have a chance to make a difference in the world. It doesn't make a difference. Linda is not going to be an ass about this. If you're not in, she's not going to do it on her own. She's going to get you out. They already owe you so much. Yeah, they do. So, what will you do? She smiles at him, pulls him in for a kiss. First, I'll have a shower. Then... She kisses him again, pulls him closer. Internal, Anna's hut in the village, night. Anna comes out of the shower, a towel wrapped around her. Pedro is waiting by the window for her. She comes up behind him. They kiss. I never thought I'd get to see you again. I was just finishing the job. Then I would have found you. He kisses her, gently takes the towel off, lets it fall to the ground. I never thought I'd get to hold you again. She kisses his neck, takes off his shirt. They move to the bed, make love. Later, Pedro traces a scar on Anna's arm. What about this one? A machete. I was 17. He was a Mexican trafficker, six foot five, built like a bear. Jorge held his men back. He wanted to see if I could do it. And could you? No. After the guy nearly cut my arm off, Jorge shot him. Pedro kisses her. Please never leave again. I love you. She turns to him, looks at him for a long time. I never thought, I never, I never thought I'd have the luxury. I, I never loved Adam. I wanted kids, yes, but I, I didn't love him. But you, I love you. A kiss. A quiero. Internal, American Embassy, Ambassador's Office, Day. Linda, Brett and Tony are sitting at the desk. You're on mute, you're on mute. Sorry. Just because the DEA has let a vigilante do their job for them doesn't mean she now gets immunity for murder. Plus, what business is it of ours anyway? She doesn't, she's not even keen on going to America. She wants to go home to Ireland. 
We owe this woman not only the lives of two Americans, we also owe her the takedown of Patent's only big cartel. She is an asset we could not have even dreamed of having. What does she want? Nothing. She just wants to go home. For God's sake, can we not let her go? Hasn't he done enough? She knows the movement on the North Trail. I don't. Our aerials can't track them, and the ground is too versatile. We need her. What are you suggesting? We dangle a plane ticket to get her to help. She has no money left and has no passport left. She's she's a hostage to the jungle as much as she ever was. We are her only way out. If she tries to get herself out, the remnants and the sympathizers of the cartel will clip her at the airport. That's the only reason why she's been cleaning up. You, you are a you are a bitch. You are a bitch. He has a point. Jesus Christ, we can't hold her to ransom like that. I want these sons of bitches gone. Do your fucking job, then. I have been trying to do my job for five years. I need her. Fuck. Fuck this. I'm calling the Irish Embassy. I already did. I explained to them that she is a murderer. You what? She is not getting amnesty, asylum, or anything from anyone unless she helps us. You're holding an innocent mother of two hostage in the jungle, Linda. Yes, I am. He looks at Brett, who covers his face. External village day. Anna is meditating at the edge of the village. Fernando comes up behind her with her gorillas all armed and ready. Pass the mother to the decision. Anna opens her eyes. See. Sí. Vamos. Internal American Embassy Situation Room Day. Linda is looking at aerials. Pedro comes storming in. You can't be in here. It's all classified. Your bastard just told me what you're planning to do, you heartless bitch. I am not planning on doing it. She's on the ground. It is being done. If she dies, I will fucking kill you with my own two hands. And you just threatened a federal agent. And you just sent an innocent woman to her death. Yes. Yes, I did. The Irish didn't want her, and the Guatemalans, well, red, white, and blue don't play for foreigners, don't you know? External jungle night. The North Trail is quiet and empty. In the shadows, Anna, Anna Fernando, and her gorillas are hiding. Fernando? Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Air support if we shoot a flare. Medical trucks waiting for our wounded. We visa for you if you want it. Freedom for me if I survive. And an American husband, apparently. If I want him. Cheap assholes. Let's get it done and be done. It's Tuesday. I want my ice cream. Later. Movement in the shadows. A caravan of heavily armed narcos moving bags up the trail. Anna nods at Fernando. The shooting begins. Anna looks to the sky. I'm coming home, boys. External. Coffee shop day. Aaron and Jordan are running towards the coffee shop where Ian, the owner, gives them their ice cream. They come running back to Pedro, who hugs the boys. Aaron, tell us again. Is that... uh, tell us again. What would you like to know? The part where she saved all the Guatemala from the bad guys. <laughs> she was the best fighter Guatemala had ever seen. But she was also so full of magic. One time, she took us dancing. Oscar and me. I thought we were stuck in the room, but as soon as she started dancing, we weren't. We were dancing among the stars, and as she sang, she made our hearts sing. 
Oscar comes around the corner with Rita, Dylan, and their baby. She was the best fighter and the best mom. She loved you. Even when she was fighting far away, she loved you. She was held hostage. She gave up her freedom so that others could be free. Internal, camp, room, night. All is quiet beyond the window. The, wound, the moon shines a cold light in. In the cell, Pedro and Anna are dancing together, holding each other, dreaming of something more. The um. end. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, everybody. Everybody, well done. Hold on. Awesome stuff. I'm going to head up shortly. I think Scotland are playing England at the minute. <laughs> oh, come on, Bill. Come on, Chisholm. Go get bored and pay Chisholm. Yeah. See you. Good luck. Bye. 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 Guys. Apologies, I was late again. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good luck, Monica. Thank oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you'll be great. <laughs>